next decades, humanity has some major challenges to contend with. Climate change, curing disease, ending inequality, ensuring sustainability, removing poverty. It would be easy to look at this list and feel disheartened, but I don't. I actually feel hopeful, because when I look around, I see the many ways in which technology has helped make our lives better. Just imagine a day in your lives without the internet, the World Wide Web, the smartphone, and everything they enable. No access to information, no digital media, no social media, no online transactions, also no diagnosis imaging, no GPS. It is inconceivable, right? I can also imagine the many doors technology will open in the future. Now, this is not to say there won't be challenges. There will be. We will have to invent the new science, technology, and solutions, and we will have to be thoughtful about the consequences of our work. We will have to ensure that the advancements are for the greater good and that everyone can benefit. It is our responsibility to make sure that this happens. Now, next, you will hear from some amazing speakers who are helping to lead this charge. Their accomplishments speak for themselves, as does their commitment to making the world better through technology. You know that these speakers have another commonality. They are all women. And this is not a coincidence. As we planned the event, we made a conscious decision to highlight the work that these great women researchers of MIT have brought to the world. And also to reflect upon what it would be like if we could collectively make greater advances where women and men participate equally in technology. Now, listening to today's program, you may be surprised that women are underrepresented in technology. But the results are undeniable. According to a 2018 McKinsey study, women form 26% of the workforce in computing. And this number actually got worse over the past 15 years. At the same time, women made great strides in other fields. Today, one in three lawyers is a woman. And 2018 saw the first medical school class with a majority of women in the United States. This is extraordinary. Now, as we think about the workforce of the future, computation, engineering, science, and more generally technology will play a critical role. They will be essential along with other uh, skills like creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration. When we ask our kids what they want to become when they grow up, I wish we could hear boys and girls alike say things like astronaut, oceanographer, climatologist, neuroscientist, roboticist, computer scientist. Now, this may not be like an obvious choice, but the way I see it, those of us who know how to make things and breathe life into them through programming have superpowers because we can make real the things we imagine. And who wouldn't want to do this? Now, for me, technology was an obvious choice. I grew up in a family of scientists. My father built the first computers in Romania, and my mother was a professor of physics. It seemed like STEM was in my DNA. But as a school kid, I was interested in history and geology and art and math and just about anything I could get my hands on. But the reality of growing up in Romania and the fact that I was good, I was good at math and physics uh, put me straight on a STEM track. Now, at that time in uh, Romania, it was common practice for high school students to spend one week each month working in a factory. The government believed that this way we would acquire some trade skills and we would be better prepared for joining the proletariat. So for some years, I spent one week each month working in a factory that produced spare parts for locomotives. I was a teenager, and I really did not see much use in that kind of work nor did the factory workers who really didn't seem to want us around. But as I look back, I see how that experience has contributed to my career um, trajectory. 
So I learned how to use machines like the lathe. I made screws from scratch, imagine that. I began to understand the principles of making things. And as the math I learned in school got more abstract, I realized that I wanted to do st something STEMI, yes, but also something with a physical component. And now here I am at MIT, living my dream, getting to build robots like Sophie, the soft robot fish uh, you saw, and really bringing together the world of computing with a physical world of mechanisms and materials. And also wondering, what can we do to help young girls discover the same kind of excitement of making things, but preferably without the rigid education of 20th century Romania? Now, every woman you will hear from today has her own story, her own perspective, her own accomplishments to bring to the stage. This kind of inclusion is exactly what technology needs. It's exactly what the world needs. It is the right thing to do, and it is the best thing to do for the world and for our field. Research is clear. If you value innovation and new ideas, diversity is crucial. Studies show that the act of adding voices to the conversation not only generates new ideas, but also helps people understand that different perspectives exist and even adapt behavior. Diversity helps people anticipate new perspectives, work harder to achieve consensus, and often achieve great outcomes, better outcomes. And yet, diversity is not enough. We are all aware of, of the dynamics that push women out of technology at rates faster than men. Women struggle to get the same opportunities for career advancement and the same pay as many of their male counterparts. Some feel excluded in sexist world, um, work cultures, and many fail to notice the lack of women in leadership positions in most technology organizations. But it is up to us, the people, the professors, the students, the entrepreneurs, the business leaders, to cause change, to ensure that everyone feels included, that everyone is part of the whole. And when we achieve this, we will be able to focus on what is achievable rather than who is in the room. <coughs> Whether we are working on advancing algorithms or uh, creating machine intelligence, or imagining the future of industries like manufacturing, healthcare, um, retail, even fashion, and also, yes, solving some of the world's greatest problems, bringing the talents, the perspectives, the creativity of women is important. And so we must ask ourselves, how do we educate our children, boys and girls alike, to be prepared for a future with technology, to have a chance to shine, and to work in environments that are inclusive and joyful. The way I like to put it, computational thinking and computational making should be part of literacy in the 21st century. Now, as you listen to our great women researchers from MIT, think about how much better off we are because they chose to pursue their passion for technology. Each one of them has big dreams with tremendous potential impact. Barbara Liskov invented the first object-oriented computer program, which is now the foundation of the entire software industry. Julie Shaw, is imagining a future where people and machines work side by side on factory floors. Nergis Mavalvala is uncovering the beginnings of the universe. Kristin Van Vliet is imagining the future of manufacturing. Judy Brewer is on a crusade to ensure technological inclusion for people with disabilities. Vivian Z is making the next generation computers that are tailored to machine learning. And Ronit Rubinfeld has developed sublinear time algorithms, which ushered in the age of big data. 
At the same time, Dava Newman is building technologies that will take us to the stars, and Hamsa Balakrishnan is turning transportation into a utility, available to anybody, anytime. Imagine Boston without traffic congestion. Wow. <laughs> so next, it's our turn to think about what we can do to ensure that the next generation has an equal opportunity for the same kind of impact. To paraphrase our hometown hero, President John F. Kennedy, we should prepare the girls to see not just what technology can do for them, but what they can do for technology. I can't wait to hear from our speakers, and I hope you will enjoy the day. Thank you.